Ladies and gentlemen, today I would like to talk about the importance of diet in caries etiology. Between the years 2016 and 2019, we carried out epidemiological studies in various age groups of children and adolescents. We surveyed over 11,000 people. The studies included clinical evaluation of the dentition and questionnaire studies. The prevalence of caries was really very high in each age group. Caries of primary teeth occurs in over 40% of three-year-olds and the prevalence increases sharply in the next two years. Unfortunately, the prevalence of caries of secondary dentition is also very high. It occurs in over 70% of 12-year-olds and over 90% of 18-year-olds. It is worth highlighting that caries of secondary teeth occurs in short time after the eruption. You can see the prevalence of caries in five and six year olds. At the age of three, on average two teeth have caries lesions. At the age of five, nearly five. A 12 year old child has on average over two teeth with caries and an 18 year old over six. As we know, there are many factors which influence caries prevalence and intensity depending on the age. In the evaluation of caries risk, we should take them into consideration. Because of this, we have differentiated four age groups for our analysis. For each group, we collected data from a clinical trial and a questionnaire. From the clinical trial, we have taken into account the prevalence of caries, the level of caries, and the number of examined teeth. From the questionnaire survey, we have taken into account socioeconomic factors, oral health behaviors, and dental care attendance. These data were then subjected to statistical analysis. In statistical analysis, we use Spearman rank correlation coefficient and univariate and multivariate logistic regression. Some of our results we have published in different journals. The group of three-year-old children seems especially important and I am going to show you this group broadly. The graph presents parents' awareness of oral health of their children. As you can see, most of parents know that sugar consumption and snacking between meals are very harmful. However, they add sugar to the meals of children and nearly 70% of children eat sweet snacks, such as pastries and dairy products. Spearman's correlation showed positive relationship between caries and the exposure of the child to sugar now and in the past. It seems that sweet snacks and drinks have the greatest impact. The analysis also confirmed that drinking water and milk without sugar and eating sandwiches and fresh fruit as snacks had positive effect on the teeth. Regardless of socioeconomic factors and oral hygiene behaviors, the risk of caries is increased mainly by sugar consumed in the second year of life. In this slide, you can see the difference in the severity of caries in children exposed and not exposed to sugar. Multivariate logistic regression confirmed a reduction in the risk of caries in children whose teeth are brushed twice a day by an adult, 
who didn't get sweet drinks before bedtime in the second year of life and who receive sandwiches and fruit as snacks. In this slide, we can see the impact of these factors on the reduction of caries severity. Please pay attention to the importance of vitamin D supplementation. The second group included children aged 5 and 6. And as you can see, the health behaviors of five and six year olds are similar. Our statistical analysis showed that caries risk factors are very similar to the younger group. We introduced hygienic behaviors as a disturbing factor in the evaluation of the influence of eating habits on the prevalence and level of dental caries. As you can see, oral hygienic behaviors only slightly reduce the negative impact of sugar on the teeth. Similar analysis was made for 12-year-olds and it showed similar influence of food products containing sugar. As you can see, the logistic regression analysis also confirmed only a slight beneficial effect of toothbrushing if exposure to sugar is too high. The importance of sugar in the diet remains the same in teenagers, especially when it means frequent drinking of sweet drinks. As in other age groups, the negative impact of a sugar-rich diet is observed regardless of hygienic behaviors. We can say that the diet plays the most important role in caries etiology. As we mentioned before, tooth brushing can only partly reduce the impact of bad eating habits on dental caries. When assessing sugar consumption in the Polish population and DMFT in 12-year-olds over several years, we notice that an increase in consumption of sugar causes an increase in dental caries prevalence and level. Unfortunately, it is innate to prefer the sweet taste. As you know, in nature, sweet taste is associated with caloric food, breast milk and fruits and uh, anti-pain effects. Consumption of sugar is higher in children and adolescents than in adults. The intake of added sugar and sucrose is highest between 4 and 18 years. Why? Despite the knowledge about the harmfulness of sugar, is the consumption of sugar so high? First, Many people believe that some sugar are less harmful to health, example, only uh, brown sugar, and some sugars are more harmful, white sugar, high fructose corn syrup. Secondly, they don't know that non-sweet sugar, which are present in many baby foods, such as starch or maltodextrins, are also cariogenic. They don't realize that the omnipresent fructose glucose syrup is very cariogenic because it is, because it is efficiently metabolized by bacteria. Many people forgot that uh, the sources of sugar are not only food products, but also drugs and supplements. Sometimes children take medication daily or several times a day for long periods of time. Obviously, foods are the main sources of sugar, especially sweet products and beverages. In Poland, we traditionally drink tea with sugar, and this habit has very negative impact on our health, not only on our teeth. 
Also, many people believe that sugar-free fruit juices are less harmful to teeth than sweetened ones, which is of course not true. People don't know that sugar is an ingredient of many dairy products, such as fruit yogurts. They think that they are very healthy. Unfortunately, in Poland, the least frequent advice given to parents and children by dentists is dietary advice. Our experience showed that uh, giving patients dietary advice is very effective. This is very important that dentists must do that. Today we face a challenge and this is an unhealthy diet, especially high free sugar consumption. This is one of the pillars that we have to focus on this year in particular to better prevent not only caries, but also other diseases such as obesity, diabetes, cancer, uh, cardiovascular diseases. Results of a survey run in December 2020 by ACFF Global showed that there may be an increase in dental caries that may be linked to a change in dietary habits or oral health regimes due to COVID day. To change the situation, common action is needed. Let's start in our region, Central and Eastern Europe, by setting up an expert group to develop dietary guidelines, another powerful tool to fight caries. Thank you for your attention. Good morning. Uh... Dear Chairman, uh, dear chapters from other countries, um, dear colleagues, and all who are interested in carious prevention in uh, uh, Czech Republic, or sorry, in carious prevention in children. Uh, my name is uh, Romana Koberová uh, Ivančakova, and I am the chapter of Czech Republic, uh, including uh, the Central European or Eastern uh, European um, group. My presentation will focus on uh, uh, dental caries in children because uh, uh, it should be uh, pointed out uh, that. Uh, early childhood caries and dental caries in preschool children is a great burden, not only to the child and uh, uh, his well-being, but also to parents, caregivers, and the whole society. Dental caries is a chronic infectious disease of multifactorial origin and uh, um, epi uh, etiology risk factors are well known, uh, particularly in uh, kids. We can talk about low parental attitude and responsibility for oral health of their children. Very important risk factor um, seems to be diet, dietary risk factors, because children have too many and too frequent sugar containing snacks and sweetened soft drinks. Also, topical use of fluoride is inconsistent because we still have uh, some um, objections uh, to uh, fluorides, to even in, to the topical application of fluorides. Then early infection of baby's mouth by carogenic microbes, what might be associated with lack of uh, general oral hygiene knowledge and reluctance of general dental practitioners to treat uh, small children. Complications of dental caries in children may lead to very serious infection, uh, infectious complication, not only uh, local as we can see on this picture, but also uh, severe um, uh, Complications uh, like um, uh, orbitus cellulitis and severe infection uh, spreading uh, uh, to uh, the 
adjacent uh, oral facial areas. At this uh, table, we can see uh, the data from Czech Republic presenting dental caries in children. Uh, we do not have uh, more um, recent data uh, because um, the epidemiological studies and epidemiological surveys in Czech Republic uh, have not been uh, conducted for the last couple of years, what might be explained uh, by um, lack of institutions and uh, state support to do these national uh, epidemiological surveys. And uh, another reason might be that 90% of Czech dental service is private and private practitioners are not interested and they are not engaged uh, in such um, help and such collection of, uh, of data. Uh, the last, uh, uh, the last data uh, include five years old kids and 12 years old kids. And we can see uh, that uh, we have uh, a little bit more than 50% of children carries free five years old kids. What is not in concordance with recommendation of who goals for um, uh, 71st century, what should be 90%. And we still have uh, almost 50% of five years old kids uh, needing some kind of dental care. A little bit better situation is in 12 years old kids, but it's still, uh, but the situation still um, does not uh, meet the criteria of who for uh, the new millennium. The question is, if we really do what we can, if our effort is effective, if our um, activities uh, are effective with a the, with the good background. In Czech Republic, uh, we have very popular uh, long lasting uh, preventive program for preschool kids, a Healthy Smile, running for more than 20 years, including 14 districts in Czech Republic. This preventive program is focused for preschool children. And uh, this preventive program is created uh, and uh, organized by dental hygienists and graduates from uh, nursing college. And uh, what is uh, the benefit of this program is not only the theoretical education of preschool kids, but also Two, twice to four times uh, practical training of oil brushing and playing and um, um, teaching kids how to prevent uh, dental caries. We also have some other regional preventive activities, but the previous one, uh, Healthy Smile, um, including uh, the mo more or much more kids than other regional. Uh, preventive activities. We also have dental card of the child, what is the part of the health and vaccination card. Uh, this uh, document uh, is scheduled uh, um, in several parts uh, from first dental visit, it should be at 12 months of age, and then regularly every six months. And in the, uh, the data or information uh, recorded in this, uh, in this card is uh, um, dental age. Uh, if dental age is corresponding um, uh, to um, biological age, uh, what kind of carious risk the particle child has. Uh, if uh, carious um, uh, is present or not and uh, what type of uh, topical, uh, topical fluoridation uh, is available for, for the particular child, what kind of topical prevention child receiving. Uh, what is very important and we are really proud, um, wait is the launch of carious prevention guidelines. 
what is the second edition uh, released this year. And this is the evidence-based recommendation for caries prevention for children and youth. And this is very useful and instructive material for dentists, dental hygienists, pediatricians, and parents. Um, uh, the goals uh, are not um, very low. Uh, our effort is focused on all caries prevention pillars, including fluoridation in office and at home, oral hygiene instruction and nutrition advice. Uh, this material represents the unified material uh, to be shared with all dental offices in Czech Republic, all dentists, dental hygienists and dental students and pediatric practitioners. And uh, uh, we would like to align recommendation of the right content or we, we just almost insist on this recommendation uh, in children to space to its EAPD documents and guidelines. This is uh, uh, the cover page of this material. Uh, this material has been um, formulated and prepared by Czech Society of Pediatric, uh, Pediatric um, Dentistry uh, with uh, the very important support of ACFF. We still have a lot to do. We still have we still have a lot of gaps. Czech Republic, um, or what what I see as a big problem is that in Czech Republic there's no dental public health service for handicapped and disabled children, for children from economically and socially deprived families, and there are still a lot of inequalities in access to oral health care service. We need to increase the number of kindergartens and schools involved in school-based preventive programs and increase their efficacy. We have to increase the remittance for the pediatric dental care by the GIF to make it more attractive for private dental practitioners and reduce the national inequalities in providing of special care and pediatric dentistry. To conclude, uh, my presentation is that uh, as in other countries in Central and Eastern Europe, 50% uh, of children affected by dental caries at the age of five years is still uh, the big problem and the great burden and the, effect, the effective programs focused, preventive program focused on oral hygiene education, topical application of fluoride, and particularly dietary advice, uh, mainly in children, maybe improve the situation. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>